that is what we wanted to... Um, the correct answer for that was negative 1. Okay? A lot of you gave me infinity or does not exist or something like that. And I really wish that had been a video problem because I'd like to know, for, for my own sake, I'd like to know how you got to that answer so we could help you get that squared away. But if this notebook will open up, I'll try to work through that problem for you there. Any other questions while we're waiting? Kelsey? Uh-huh. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. Um, any other questions? Thank you for your honesty, though. Um, any incompletes that you've got, you need to try to get those worked out as quickly as possible there, okay? I'm giving you a little bit of leniency right now because I haven't worked out a good flow of getting things back to you. And uh, Do y'all feel like you are a little bit uncertain what's due when? Okay, good. I, I do too, so I'm going to work on that for the rest of the way out, okay? Right now, you've got a web assign, an FRQ, and a test. Vi a video problem too? Yeah, a video problem. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Forum. You have a web assign, forum. Let's forget about the video problem right now. Will that be okay? It's going to be done. It's going to be done. It's going to be done, okay? just doesn't have to be done right now, okay? It, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Web assign and forum. Let's be sure you get those two things done because that's really getting us prepared for the test real well there. Okay? Jerry? I'll do my best to. I think, I, yeah, that was another problem that y'all had. Let's look at those two problems here. Um, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like this. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over the square root of x squared minus x, uh, something like that. That was one of the problems you had there, okay? And the correct answer to this is negative 1, okay? Now, several of you wrote down infinity or negative infinity for that problem, okay? And let's talk about why this is the case. So, when you look at this, how do we normally solve limits at infinity? Exponents. We look at our three rules. We look at the exponent on the top and the exponent on the bottom. Yes, sir? Wouldn't the, uh, the square root in, cancel out the exponent? Okay, that, that's wrong and right. Okay? okay? All right. That's bad math. You can't say the square root of x squared is x, so it's just x, because you've got this x squared minus x in there. Yes, sir. You can't do that. But it works. All right? So uh, that's the reason it's wrong and right. It's not mathematically right but it does give you the answer here, okay? But if you just try to go by our rules here, well, we've got a one exponent in the numerator, and then we've got this ugly square root in the bottom. So that really means our rules won't work any longer looking strictly at the rules. Now, if you do just what Sutton said and think of it, well, we know that this part out here doesn't really matter, does it? Why does this not matter? It's so much smaller than x squared when we get to these big numbers that we're talking about here. So if we think of it as just x over the square root of x squared, well, the square root of x squared is just plain old x, isn't it? But it's going to be positive. So we're going to have a negative really big number up here and a positive the same big number down here. So it's a negative over a positive, so the answer is negative 1. That's just thinking through it. Well, what else could we do to help with this thing? Plug in large numbers is what I would do. In fact, I recommend, or somebody did this, I think. If you put in negative 10 million, that's one more zero, three, and you put that in, and if you put it in down here as well, one, two, three, four, five, six, squared minus one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be plus, okay. It, it, but if you do that on your calculator, you're going to wind up getting something like 10 million. Point 0.5 in the denominator. So you've got negative 10 million divided by negative divided by 10 million point 0.5, and if you do that, you'll find out that's about the number negative one. 
So that's what I would do with these. Is I, remember we said, always, always, always check them with big numbers. Most of the time you're looking just for the sign with that. But simply by looking at the big numbers, I see that looks like it's going to 1. If you graphed it, you'd find the same thing, that it's going to 1 out there. Negative 1, okay? All right, now, let's look at another problem. Uh, there was another problem, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was something like the sine of 2x over x. And that limit is 0, yeah. That's zero. Because, and, and tell me what's happening on the top. The sign of 2x. That's right. It's just oscillating back and forth between the 1 and negative 1. It's never bigger than 1, and it's never smaller than negative 1. And the bottom is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I've got 1 divided by a billion, that's almost zero. If I've got negative one divided by a billion, it's still almost zero. What does it mean, though, if it's negative one divided by a billion? It's going to be almost zero, but it's going to be slightly below. So if you remember, this one is very much like this problem that we worked in class. Remember, we said that this graph, as we get out here to the end, just wind up getting where it's just barely moving up and down, but it's approaching zero. It's never going to get to, it's going to cross zero a lot, but it's never going to get to a point that it just stays zero. Does that help, Jerry? Not sure, are you? What do you think it ought to be? D and E. Why do you say D and E? All right, it, yeah, it keeps, I, I see what you're saying. It keeps going through, but every, the further to the right you go, it's getting closer and closer to zero every time. I'm never going, it's never going to stop on zero, but every time, every number that I put in here, this number here is getting larger and larger on the bottom, so it's just going to be getting closer and closer to zero all the time. It's never going to become zero, but it's always, it's going to get to a point that we can't tell the difference with our eyes, with our math. We can't see that it's not something other than zero. Our logic says it's got to be something other than zero, but it's just going to be approaching zero out there. That's a very difficult problem to understand. I, I certainly agree, understand that. So we're talking about sine, twist, under tan, it's going to be... Ooh, what about tan? Tangent's different. Tangent's different? Yeah, because the tangent's going to be a fraction already, you know, and that, that would really blow our minds if we did that. I don't think we'll do that just yet. Okay, so you're talking sine or cosine, just knows that. Well, I, I hate to say always, yeah, that, that's because that's not always true. What if it were x over the sine of 2x? What's that limit? That'd be actually pretty big. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist? Why not? Um, because it would be, the denominator would be oscillating between 1 and negative 1. And so if it's infinity or negative infinity, that's too much of a difference. See, so, do you see what he's saying? This is getting larger and larger and larger. Sometimes this is going to be a positive number, so it'll be infinity. Sometimes this is going to be a negative number, so it'll be negative infinity. Sometimes it's zero, so it'll be zero. So this thing is just bouncing all... This is having real bad mood swings, okay? Okay, so all it's, right. on the, it's on the uh, denominator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like to say always, even with that, okay? But just, you, you're going to have to really do some thinking here. This person here, the person with this graph here, they're getting quiet and reserved, okay? Things are going crazy all around them, but they're getting quiet and they're getting reserved. They're just off in the corner. You don't know where they're at, okay? This person here, further out, there you go. You gave them too much sugar, okay? They're bouncing all over the world, okay? And they just keep going bouncing all over. That's the difference between these two graphs here, okay? So, any, a big ticket you need to know for the rest of the year in here. Always and never or never said, okay? There's, there's no such saying. Well, there's a very few times that there's an always. There's a very few times that there's a never. Stay away from those words. They'll get you in trouble, okay? All right. 
What I would like to see us do is I would like to see us start in this thing that was called testing review. And I would like to see us, uh, y'all work the first five problems. I think starting with that one there. Is that the first one? No. That's not the first one, is it? Is that what the first problem looks like? Or is it that one? No, it's, I hope it's the number one. There we go. All right? So, do the first five problems. Just get what you think is the right answer, and we're going to come back and look at these here in just a second, all right? I'll give you about four or five minutes. Give you a few minutes to suffer with these. If you'd like to talk with somebody about it, that's fine too. This was on Moodle. Test review should be down towards the bottom of the limit section. Not on ones that say without using a calculator. All right, there is a section of these, and I've got to look and really see if the if you're going to use your calculator at all on this test. I don't think so. I don't think any of these problems that we've got in this packet are calculator type problems here. Bless you. Remember everything we've learned about evaluating limits. Go through in your head everything that you need to do. Just do the first five problems and then we're going to look at them and come back and before you go any further. Really? That's ridiculous. feeling with this. Yeah. That does blow your mind, doesn't it? I mean, wait a minute. Who would do such a thing as this? What's the what, babe? Oh, uh, cube. It's the cube root of the top, the cube root of x cubed, minus the cube root of the second one. All right, now you're going to square this thing, opposite sign. No, no, I'm, not for that. Right there, it's going to be opposite sign. Multiply these two things together. Square the last one. So it's going to always be positive. Mm -hmm, that'll be it.
Yes. How do you factor that? Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, it's the cube root of the first thing. Same sign, the cube root of the second thing. So let's write that part down and go from there. The cube root of x cubed. Uh-huh. Same sign. Cube root. There you go. So that's your binomial. Now you've got a trinomial. Square that. Opposite sign. Multiply these two things together. Always positive sign. And square the last thing. And that does it. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to share with us how to solve these problems? Well, it all goes back to Pascal's trial. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are y'all impressed that the history teacher remembers Pascal's triangle? Yes. What, look at there. I'm impressed. <laughs> That's beneath him. Listen, we just studied, we just historically studied about Pascal. Good. We heard about your boy Copernicus and Newton, all your. Yeah. Four to study enough all I'm assuming that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I just wanted to be sure. No. That's quite all right, my good man. Quite all right. That's right. So it gives me my right angle. And I'm able to do a field. Yeah. So I know I know it's I'm able All right. To do a field. Thank you, sir. All right, let's look at these first four or five problems. And, and so you can figure out what's going on here and see how well you're doing here. What's the first thing you're gonna to do to solve this problem? Plug it in. What do you get? Zero over eight. Zero over eight, so the answer is zero. zero. Okay. That's called welcome to the test, okay? First problem normally is fairly easy there, okay? So get you into the test and make you feel confident about it, okay? There is no descending, uh, there is no ascending order of difficulty necessarily. There's also no way to make, the, make it go forward evidently. Why? My computer is having all these glitches. There we go. All right. So now we've got a limit at infinity. So what jumps to our head? We've got infinity in here. What does that tell us? Plug in large numbers. Anything else? Check your exponents. Which is the best way to solve this problem? Check the degree. So what are you going to come up with for an answer? Negative 1. Can everybody see that? Because the degree on the top and the bottom are the same, so it's going to be the lead coefficient over the lead coefficient. Remember, lead coefficient is not the first coefficient. Lead coefficient is the one in, in front of the largest exponent. Negative 1 over 1, the answer is negative 1. Woo! -hoo. Two for two, people. I would hope so. Like if you did Big numbers there like a thousand squared and a thousand squared. Four minus a thousand is going to be a negative big number. A thousand squared minus one is going to be a positive, close to the same big number, so it should be negative one there. Question? All right, good, 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 good. All right, I'm going to continue to have to walk over here because the board does not want to cooperate with me today. Number three, okay? All right, I see going to three. What do you all think the answer is? I hear one-fourth. Everybody agree with one-fourth? Okay. What did we do to figure that out? Okay, if we factor, the numerator is going to stay like it is. The bottom becomes x minus 3, x plus 1. How do I know the bottom's going to be x minus 3? 
How do I know the bottom's going to be x minus 3? Because I need something to cancel out. Would it do me any good if the bottom were x plus 3? None whatsoever. So I expect that to be x minus 3 so I can cancel those things out there, okay? And then when we plug in, those things will cancel so I can get 1 over 4. Very good, very good. That button is still stuck there. All right, so what about problem four? This one I heard some weeping and moaning about. Ah, uh, why did it do that? It's still a little flicking up there, isn't it? I think it's my computer. Okay, I heard some weeping and moaning over this. What do we think the answer is? One. Zero. One. Ooh. I don't know. Okay. All right. Ooh. Well, what's the first thing you try to do? Plug it in. What happens when you plug in? You get indeterminate. What do you do if you get indeterminate? Simplify. Simplify it. How can you simplify it? Reduce it to one over one. When it's one over one, what's the limit? One. Okay. But, but doesn't it, it really bothers you to factor out those X's and cross them both out, doesn't it? Because I'm not left with anything. Why would they do something like that? But that's exactly right. We can cancel this X with this X, so we're simply left with the limit as X approaches 0 of 1. What's the limit of this, pr of this problem that I wrote in green? What's the limit of this problem that I wrote in green when X is 7? When x is approaching 7? 1. What about when x is approaching pi? One. What about when x is approaching anything? One. Approaching infinity? One. Very good, okay. Just because we don't have an x out there is okay. Everything's just going to 1. Everybody's going to the same place. And then what was your difficulty with number 5? Factoring this top thing is a difficulty, okay? Yep. This is the cube root, same sign, cube root. All right? And then we square that thing, opposite sign, multiply these two things together, 2x, always a positive sign, and square this 2, which is a 4. That's how that numerator factors. Alright, so now, once we've gotten that way, what can we figure out to do? We can cancel out the x minus 2's, and if we cancel the x minus 2's, now we should be able to plug in, because we're not going to get 0 on the bottom, we're going to get a 4, so it really doesn't matter what happens on the top as long as we get something. We get 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12, so a final answer of 3 there, okay? Very good, okay? If you remember how to factor that, that becomes an easy problem, okay? Very good. So, pretty good on the first five. Let's go ahead and look at the next five, and I'll give you about five minutes on them, and let's see what we can come up with. I like the thinking back there. That's good. That's good. No, we'll see here in a second. Let's look at six now. Six, I see a limit going to infinity. Right? So what do I think? Degrees. So Jamie, what do you want to say the answer is? B. B, negative one-fourth, okay? Degrees are the same. It's negative one on top, four on the bottom. Very good. Very good. This just does not want to work today. Seven. I see going to negative infinity. So what does that make me think? Same thing as before, but that negative, normally that negative means I really need to be careful of my signs there, okay? I look at the degrees. What do the degrees tell me? 
Numerator is bigger, so that tells me what? Infinity or negative infinity. Well, which one is it in this case? Negative. Why? The top is going to be negative. Can everybody see that the top is going to be negative? Because you're going to have negative infinity cubed. That's going to be a negative number times 5. The bottom is going to be positive because you're squaring it, which is going to make it positive, and multiplying by 20, which still keeps it positive. So we've got negative divided by positive. We've got negative infinity on that one as well, or on that one. Okay? Good. Then we had 8, and we've got a limit going to infinity again. This time the biggest is on the bottom, so the limit is? Zero. Very good. All right, we felt good, and then we hit number nine. And what's the difficulty with number nine? We've got negatives in our exponents, and also what else is true? We've got x's in our exponents. So it's not like before where we could say, well, the bigger one's on the top or the bottom because the variable's always changing there. So what do you do? Plug in, Plug in numbers, okay. What's 2 to the negative 10 million? Oh, sounds like a small number, doesn't it? 2 to the negative point 10 million, okay. Well, yeah, um, let's see if we can help ourselves a little bit, okay? Could we rewrite this? How could we rewrite it then? Did somebody say yes, we could rewrite that? All right. So we could as 1 over 2 to the x over 2 to the x. Now, why can we do that, Jerry? Yes, you, this is. Do you remember this back from way before? Two to the negative three, the same as one over two to the third. That's just what we did there. Okay, we said two to the negative x is one over two to the x. Well, that looks a lot uglier to me, people. Keep change flip. Very good. We can simplify this a little bit more. We can make it like this. If we multiply both of these by, what, 1 over 2 to the x is one way to think of it. Keep change flip is the other. We get 1 over 2 to the x times 2 to the x. Y'all with me with that now? I'm just, one, one way to think of this is I'm keeping the numerator changing this to multiplication and flipping that over, make it 1 over 2, at, 2 to the x times 1 over 2 to the x. So I wind up with this. Well, now that's a little bit easier to look at, isn't it? What does that become? 1 over 2 to the 2x or 1 over 2 to the x squared, something that... What's the most important thing to know about the denominator? What's going to happen when I put infinity in there? It's getting humongous. So what's the final answer going to be? Very good. Zero is the final answer. Good work. Zero is the correct answer there. Okay? How many of you guessed and got that right? How many of you worked through it and got that right? Good, 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 good. Okay? I'm glad, glad to see that. But either way, you got it right. That's the most important thing right now, okay? Ah! There's a smaller degree on the top, therefore it's going to zero. Hmm. Sounds right. Yeah, sounds right. Very good, very good. Well then with that logic, what did you do with this one? Same thing? And he says infinity. Uh, ooh. Oh, we've got some people speaking up big time. Why do you think infinity, people? Well, if they're both negative, they cancel out to be a positive. It would be a positive exponent over negative. Yeah. Negative ah. Would be a larger 
See? See, use, all right, you, using your rules of thinking, when I put a negative number in here, that becomes positive and that becomes negative. So the bigger exponent is in the numerator, therefore infinity is what you said there, right? Okay, let's look at it algebraically. Is that what you did? Kind of like what you did before. If I make this, this is the same thing as before. So I can make this the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over 2x squared. That's just the same identical function we had a while ago. Well, now what's happening when I put negative infinity in here? That's right. This number on the bottom is getting small now, people, because it's 2 to a negative power. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. 2 to the negative 4 is negative 1, is 1 16. So I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, what's 1 divided by a really small number? A really big number, so infinity. Either way, we get to the same answer there, okay? All right, I think our bell is about to ring. Now, there are 24 or 20-odd 20 more problems. We're not going to be able to work through all 20 of those problems in class tomorrow, okay? My advice to you is to go home or go to a second period or go somewhere, and at some point in time between now and tomorrow, try to work through these. Probably 10 of them, you're going to say, boom, I'm confident this answer's right, no problem. Okay? There's going to be about 10 of them that's going to make you scratch your head and say, what on earth is he asking here? Okay? Then when you get to that one, just move on, come back to it in a little bit, and maybe eventually it'll make sense to you, okay? But we'll try to work through them tomorrow. I will provide you tomorrow with answers for all of them. Either A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, D, or E answers for all of them tomorrow. If I have the opportunity, I'll work through and show you the work that I would use to get to those answers on all of them. But at the very least, I'll give you A, B, C, D, E answers for all of them, okay? You have a web assigned due tonight, is that right? Okay, it should really help you towards getting ready for this test, so that's the reason it is right now. And you've got a forum. Again, it should help you getting ready for the test. Video problem two will be an optional grade for you, okay? So if you have done it and want me to grade it, I'll grade it. If it helps you grade, we'll be. If it doesn't, I'll throw it away, okay? If you want to do it, do it by, month, by Tuesday. Do it by Tuesday. If it helps you grade, I'll count it. If it doesn't, I won't. If you don't want to do video problem two, don't do it. I won't grade it. It won't count against you, okay? Won't happen very often, but that's going to happen with this video problem, okay? So you've only got two things you have to do for grades right now, okay? Three, actually. St got to study for a little test on th Friday. Yeah. Forum problem, web assigned, and the test. You don't have to do the video problem. You can, but you don't have to, okay? And I'll do a better job of preparing y'all uh, the rest of the way of knowing what's happening when. And doesn't the bell ring soon? Two minutes, okay. I couldn't remember what time. 9.05. All right.